Not long ago, I had to do some work sorting and manipulating time in a Postgres database. After doing some research, I immediately found out that manipulating time and always displaying the correct time is quite hard. There are some strategies that you can adopt and do, but let's start with the prerequisites. What is time from a computer science perspective? Well, in computing, the time is measured by a system clock, which is typically implemented as a simple count of number of texts from a certain starting date called epoch. Like in Unix or other POSIX compliance systems, the system time is just a number that records every second from a starting date like 1st January 1970 with some exceptions regarding leap seconds. A leap second is just an adjustment to make the measurements be compatible with UTC. Postgres has some types that can handle time. Timestamp and timestamp TZ are used for storing full timestamps. They both have the same memory layout. The difference is that timestamp TZ converts the value to UTC and timestamp doesn't. This is why many people are confused and immediately think that timestamp TZ, meaning timestamp with time zone, actually stores the time zone, but it does not. It's just more of a semantical meaning. Think of it like a type def in C. Let's talk about some time conventions like UTC. UTC is also called as coordinate universal time. UTC plus zero is located in Greenwich, England, and it's used as a base reference to compute the other time zones. In some places, UTC is also referred as GMT. For example, if we move more to the east, then UTC offset value will increase. If we move more to the west, then the offset value will decrease. So for example, 2 p.m. plus 0 UTC, it's 2 p.m. If we were located in a country with a time zone offset plus 2, then 2 p.m. plus 2 UTC will be equal to 4 p.m. So it's basically simple arithmetic to compute the correct time given a base time plus any given positive or negative offset. When you execute a query that you're adding using as an input a timestamp with time zone, Postgres will use the time zone from the input to convert it to appropriate UTC by default. This can be changed in the Postgres config file or in the session. If no time zone is added in the input string, then it's assumed to be in the time zone indicated by the system time zone parameter, and the given time is converted to UTC. When you insert into the database a row that has a timestamp TZ value like for example this, it will store it as a result of 6 plus 2, meaning our 8. You then as a caller have the responsibility to figure out by yourself what was the timestamp used at insertion to get back the appropriate value. Given these important points, you always need to be careful what you're doing with the timestamps. You have to make some decisions. You carefully store the time zone alongside with the value converted automatically in UTC or let the client figure out what's the appropriate time to display it. Other things that you should always have in mind is that you can have in the same time zone one repeating hour or skipping an hour entirely. This happens when the country zone changes from winter saving time to summer time. So let's say, as an example, 4 p.m. summer time to winter time will repeat again. Why? Well, you basically turn the clock back one hour and the resulting time in that moment will be 3 p.m. making the whole 3 p.m. 4 p.m. repeat one more time. So this is turning the day into a 25 hour day instead of being the normal 24 hour one. The same goes when you convert from winter time to summer time, but this time the clock will be set one hour after. So you basically skip one hour, in our case 4 p.m. and the day will have 23 hours instead of 24. As you can see, dealing with time zones are pretty complicated because there is a lot of factors to consider. You have to deal with the social and political changes, not only in geographical locations. Some countries are changing their time zone by synchronizing with other clocks from the other side of the globe just for reducing shipping costs or other political factors. That's why I think the best way is to always store an absolute value, which is UTC, in your backend. And whenever you want to make certain computations and use the time, you, as a caller, have the responsibility to convert that UTC value in your local time zone. I wrote a practical example. The code is not production quality, but I wanted to illustrate trade this even further. Don't rush and say that my code does not treat XSS or any other security vulnerability because this is not the point that I'm aiming here. I've made a simple web server in Go that basically handles two main routes. One is the root route that will render the home page. It's using a simple SQL select statement with some light template rendering, nothing fancy. The thing that I want to focus here is the second route. Let's look at the template code. I've written this simple JavaScript code that's listening for the submit event of the form. When the submit is pressed, it formats the data before sending it. We then send the URL from encoded data to the add route by using the fetch function. The add route verifies if the data is not empty and available. If the data is present, then we parse the time we receive to the appropriate format, then we just use a simple SQL select query to insert it and we let the SQL driver handle all types correctly. If we inspect the database, we have the data that was just previously inserted. When we print out the data for our clients, we should print the timestamp in our local time zone. If you see my local time is Eastern European plus 2, so this means that all the data is printing correctly to my local time. This works nicely because even if multiple users add items in our table, we would see the time from our local time. 
like if the action was happening in our world time. This can have drawbacks. Every user sees all timestamps from the local time perspective. You could not know which date was recorded in what time zone. To have this functionality, we need to also store the time zone of the item. You can now ask, but how can we take care of all different time zones? We can Google and search for this exact thing. Turns out that Yana stores a file with all the recorded time zones alongside with some utility C code. I'm sure that every modern programming language has this code somehow incorporated in the runtime. Like for example Go, it expects to find a zip file this location or if the file does not exist then it checks the zone info environment variable for an alternative path and so forth. The moral of the story is that you shouldn't write yourself time zone handling code because this has already been dealt by other people. You should also let the users control how their timestamp want to be printed. Thanks for taking your time. See you in the next video. Bye.